Hey, how's it going? Big Gambo here. Today, I'm just going to show you my vintage military collection. It's all just clothes. Um, most of them are like pre-80s. Uh, and it's basically what I've been obsessed with for about the last eight months or so. Um, on YouTube, there's not really many people showing their vintage military clothing collections. I don't have that much. Uh, this is actually just the start of my collection. I've sold a ton of it on eBay and pretty much everything that I've sold that was older I regret selling like today for example which is what made me want to make this video I went to go uh put on a pair of pants they were these uh uh ERDL pants they were 60s from Vietnam because I had a pair that fit me and I wanted to wear them because they're good for hot weather and I had sold them I got like a hundred bucks for them but they were no longer in my closet, so I just wanted to document what's in my closet, just in case I accidentally sell any of it. Um, yeah, this isn't really an eBay video. This is just showing the cool stuff that I have in my closet. Um, and I hope to have much more in my closet at some point. Here is a pair of similar pants to the ones I sold. These are ERDL, which stands for Engineering Research and Development Laboratories, which is the lab for the military that designed all their early camouflage patterns. And here is a pair from Vietnam era. I don't know if they were actually ever used. Uh, these ones are from 1968. They're called Trouser Man's Camouflage Cotton Wind Resistant Poplin Class 2. These ones are a little too big for me. But I love this pattern. It's like the precursor to the uh, Woodland M81 pattern. There's this one, and then there's one that came between it, which I forgot what that one's called. But man, they're cool. They're like ripstop. And what I really love about the military clothing is like, most of the things that you see in modern clothing were originally um, made for military clothing, like these cargo pockets, the pleated cargo pockets, ripstop. Um, what's another invention? Velcro. Like all these things were originally made for military clothing and then they were adopted into civilian clothing. Super cool. So it's like the history of clothing. Here's another similar pair, but these ones are just, I think an OG 107 green. Also from Vietnam. These ones are from 1969. So they're the same pants. They're just in green super cool let's do pants first i guess i think these are m65 pants because they have similar pockets to the what you would see on the uh jacket well, let me see yeah trousers men's field m65 so these are what would be worn and these ones are from uh 1967 these would be warm with your uh, classic M65 jacket, which I don't have one in the closet, so I probably should get one of those for the closet. Super cool. The jacket's what you see like uh, Robert De Niro wear in the Taxi Driver movie. Let's stick to the Vietnam stuff first. This is a mystery. Found this in the thrift. Now, some people on the military forums and on eBay will call it like um, an ARVN advisor, Army Republic of Vietnam advisor jacket, because uh, the Special Forces guys back in Nam, they would um, buy stuff that was made by like Vietnamese tailors and other close Asian countries, and then they'd also buy stuff that was made for civilians in the U.S. Like this one, I think might be Camo brand, Camo with a K, and then. Because basically the special forces guys, they would go to like Laos and Cambodia and all these places where they weren't supposed to be. Um, so they would have to wear like stuff that couldn't tie them back to the United States. So it would all be like unbranded stuff made by uh, the Vietnamese, the Japanese, Chinese. Um, and this potentially is one of those things. This could just be an old hunting jacket. But... It's made with the like exact same 
um, sateen fabric that you would find on like the uh, utility shirts, which is what made me, and it's got the green buttons, which are very similar to what you would find on something like this which is just a OG 107 shirt. This is supposed to have the long sleeves on it. I had like four of these and I sold a bunch of them with the patches. Yeah, here's one that I kept because I didn't want to repair the pocket. These are super common. Anyways, onward. Here's the pair of pants that would go with this. And this is Vietnam era as well. Here's the pair of pants that would go with that. This is a huge size. Uh, I would have, I should have kept a size that fit me instead of this huge size. I don't really wear this stuff, but if I ever did want to wear it, I'd like it to be in my size. This is like a size 40 or something. Trouser men's cotton OG 107 type one class one 1967. And I kept these ones because they're made by um, Williamson Dickey Manufacturing, which is Dickey's, like Dickey's brand. That was pretty cool. That's why I kept those. All right, more Vietnam. This is a what they call a jungle jacket. It's ERDL again. This one I like because it had the USMC stencil on it. This one is from 1970. Super cool. I like to imagine that this is a bullet hole. But I mean, there's no blood or anything. So it's probably just a cigarette hole. Super cool. I wish I could find more stuff that had more patches on it. But in my book, I've got this book about tiger stripe, which I haven't found any tiger stripe yet. I'm only 17 pages into this textbook. But I've already learned that most of like, yeah, tiger stripe stuff and the ERA, ERDL stuff, the stuff that was actually worn in combat, they didn't really put patches on it because... They wanted to actually blend in. So it'll be more on like the utility work shirts that you'll see the patches, like something like this. But the actual jungle jackets. And this one's cool because it's got the slant pockets. I don't know what pattern this is. Not the camo pattern, but they call it a pattern. Like there'll be like three versions of this shirt, but they'll all have slightly different details. Like some of them, the early ones that have like what do you call it, epaulets? Anyways, is there any more Vietnam? Oh yeah, there's more Vietnam. I mean, almost everything I have is from Vietnam because I guess there's a lot of Vietnam vets around here. I got two of these. These are uh, Alpha Industries um, MA1 jackets. So to date these, you always gotta go into the pocket. And then what you're looking for will be in there. These smelled terrible when I got them. So like I soaked them in the tub with this laundry sanitizer stuff and now they smell very strong of the laundry sanitizer stuff, but probably should sell one of them because I don't need two. This one is from 1971. It is my favorite of the two because this one has like these cool pocket flaps this one, I think, is maybe from 68. Yeah, this one's from 68, but I don't like it as much. I kind of like the flaps on the pocket. Yeah, but they're reversible. You can wear them with the orange side out. Super cool. Uh, yeah, I just love them. I have another similar jacket. This one is the N2B parka. Or sorry, it's not the parka. The parka version is the, I think, N3B. And correct me if I'm wrong on any of this stuff. This is the N2B. The parka version is like a longer. This one's cool because it's got that almost like a cropped fit. And this is a coyote fur. Yeah, and if I'm wrong about anything, just please correct me. I'm relatively new at this. I've only been doing this for like eight months. And pretty much everything I'm showing you, besides one or two items, was thrifted or flea marketed. Like this I got at the flea market. And it's cool, it zips up into this clamshell hood. It's a little stiff, but yeah, I just love this one. 
probably never saw that. And this one is from, if you see the black tags, those are always older. But this one I think is from 63. Super cool. This is another 60s thing. This would be like early, early Vietnam. Cause this is uh, from 62. This is before we sent like regular troops over there. There was just like advisors. This one is from 1962. It's Coat Man's Cotton Wind Resistant. I think this is called, I don't remember, M53 jacket or something like that. M51? I don't remember. Please tell me. I forgot. But it's the one that came before an M65. Super cool. Got this in a uh, state auction box thing. It smelled so bad, and now it smells super good. All right. Here is some um, World War II stuff. This is all I have from World War II. Um, I don't know what the pattern is called on these ones either. These ones are herringbone, this is a herringbone twill. I don't know, what do you call it? Just like a fatigue shirt. See, there's like different patterns. Like one of them will have um, like weird hexagon shaped pockets. And I don't know which one this is. I think this is, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say M43. I hope this video attracts some uh, military people that can tell me which one this is. But I believe it's Army because it's got the 13 star buttons. I want to find one. I think it's called the P41. I, so I could be wrong, but I forget all the names. But that one just has the pocket up here and it has the USMC. And then it's got the USMC little donut buttons. That's the one I really want. Um, and then I got the pants, which I found at the Goodwill Benz which was amazing. These only cost me like three bucks. And these, I believe, are the ones that are supposed to go with this shirt, but the shirt's all faded out. Super cool. And these actually fit me, which is insane. The waist, it's supposed to be a size, size 32, 33, but it actually measures like 35, like they were never washed. They're like pretty much dead stock except for these stains. Uh, insane that I found those. And then I've got my old army bag. It says army on it somewhere, I think. It's just a laundry bag. Super cool. But this one I also found at the bins on the same day. The tearing bone twill as well. Um, yeah, is this the one that does the cool No, I have another bag that has a cool Levi's pocket on it. I think it's a Levi's pocket. This is it. Yeah, this one's just kind of like a canvas, but it says it was made in 45. And then it's got the denim pocket. There's like a homemade patch right here. And I'd like to believe that these are World War II Levi's pockets right here, or one World War II Levi's pocket. I don't know. Could be, maybe it's not. But in my dreams it is. What else we got? So that's the World War II stuff I got. And then I just have some like kind of modern stuff. This is listed on eBay, it's just like a navy um, U.S. Navy, like, peacoat, it's wool. I don't particularly like this, so I have it up on eBay. I don't know when it's from. I had a hard time dating it, too. I don't even know how old it is. Maybe someone can tell me. Oh, it doesn't look that old, the tag, but it could be. And then I got these. This is my favorite, like, newer camo, camo pattern. It's the Desert Night camo. Here's the parka. And this was made for, like, 
uh, for a night vision scope so that this was supposed to like confuse the um, night vision. That's why it's got this weird like grid pattern. But I believe that it didn't actually work very well and that's why they stopped using it. This was from 2001. And then I've got the pants. And these pants are super cool and stylish. Um, and you'll see a lot of people selling them, like vintage people. But what sucks about these pants is they're supposed to be over pants. So all of the pockets just go to nowhere. There's not a single pocket on here. I think, yeah, there's no, I think even the cargo pocket on the side just goes straight through to your leg. There's no pocket bags. Um, so I'd like, I'd wear these, but they're not very usable. The butt pockets have an actual patch pocket that'll hold whatever, but yeah, and that's it for all my military collection. I don't think that's that much, but um, in the future, when I update you in like a year, hopefully we get some tiger stripe in there. I mean, I might never find any, but it's my dream. That's why I've got this book. This book is insane. Only 17 pages in, but every page is like four regular pages. It's got little pictures in it. It's got like all the patterns, all the little tiny details. Um, yeah, and the guy who wrote it is like a collector and dealer of Tiger Stripe. He had like over 800 pieces at one time. Um, anything else? Yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching. Hopefully in a couple years, in like 20 years, if eBay is still around, I'm just going to be showing you like legit Nazi uniforms and stuff. Um, cause that's where it all leads to eventually. But for now it'll be this kind of lower end stuff, but thank you for watching.